Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Six Figure Certified Coach, the podcast powered by IGC, and today hosted by myself, Liv Chapman, the CEO of IGC, and of course, Katie DePaula, our lovely founder and my business bestie. Welcome back. Aw, that's cute. I'm just trying to be nice today. Oh, you're trying to be nice. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. Well, that brings us to our topic of the day, which is that you are the greatest project you will ever work on. Yes, you are. And we're going to dig deep into the coaching request, what coaching is, what coaching isn't, which is a huge theme of our podcast. And this idea that coaching is really a project, it's not a problem. So this came up in our level two leaders rising retreat over the weekend. We had like a fun, heated debate over it or conversation rather. <laughs> but tell us a few key points, Liv. Like, why is this such a sticky topic when it comes to coaching? Right. So first of all, our level two students are like, they have gone through training. They have had hundreds of hours of client experience. Like they are amazing, you know, certified credentialed coaches. Right. And we're sitting right. around the table with this group in LA on our uh, retreat. So our uh, level two students get two retreats a year. So we get to meet up. We have people from all over the world. It's amazing. And I'm hosting um, hot seats, which is where you do like, you know, people can kind of do a speed coaching request, if you will. And we're like, oh, yeah. them, right. And people are like, I don't really have a coaching request. Right. And, and we're like, bullshit. Yeah. We're like, wait, what? <laughs> How do you not? Right. Like, look where you are and look what you're doing. And you know, it kind of, this is kind of how it came up, right? Like we often think, even if we're well-trained, like if nothing's wrong, if there isn't a problem, I don't really have a request. And well, and let's just pause there for a moment, because like, this is an age old thing that you and I get super annoyed about, which is this, like, I don't have a request thing. So often like this, like Liv is saying, like, this is a very common thing. Often clients will say when they get on the phone or students will say like, I don't have a coaching request. I don't have a training request. And to us, that's like, if you don't have a coaching request, you're dying. <laughs> well, it's like, you don't have a coaching request. You don't have a coaching call. Why are we here? And are we wasting your money? I'd really like to not be, but like, let me also just run it back really quick. Like if you're new to yeah. coaching and even if you've worked with a coach and you're like, I've never had a coaching request, like a coaching request is what you want to walk away from the call with, right? Yeah. The differentiating factor from talking to your best friend or your partner, or even your therapist or whoever you go to, right? Like mm -hmm. those just might be flowy conversations, right? Where you're venting and you're talking about what's going on and it weaves here and it weaves there. And like, it's great. And it's valuable. And like relationships exist like that, right? Like yeah. half the time I prefer to be in those relationships, right? Like a little less challenging, but mm -hmm. when it comes to a coaching call, if you want to have clients that are getting something from coaching, right? Like nobody wants the client who's like, this isn't working. I want to quit. You have mm -hmm. to have them, you know, present or bring to you a coaching request, which of course you help them form as their trained and certified coach. And then it's right. very, very clear what they're walking away with. So I think this is a huge differentiator in us as a company and our approach to coaching. My belief is that you get like your, the success of your, of your coaching calls and the success of you as a coach is based solely upon, well, not solely is based <laughs> predominantly wrong word. Sorry. It's based, based predominantly upon the coaching request. And so your job as the coach is to help pull out a powerful coaching request from your client. So to me saying like, I don't have a coaching request is like, I don't want anything right now. I don't need anything right now. There's nothing in my life that could be better right now. And traditionally the way that people often view coaching requests is that they're problems. And so this is where someone will say like, there's nothing wrong. So therefore I don't have a request and Liv and I are like, there's nothing wrong 
just because there's nothing wrong doesn't mean you have like, so th- that's great that there's nothing wrong in the moment, but the question then becomes, well, what else do you want? Like, what's the, what's next? What else do you want to evolve? Honestly, right? so- I know you're going to get to the things, but like, you're almost like breaking my heart saying that it's like, when did we become so conditioned as a society where it's like, we don't have anything to talk about if something's not wrong or there's nothing to complain. Oh my God. About. You're so right. I'm like, <laughs> woo. Well, and it's funny because like, you know, when you go to like lunch with a friend or like drinks or whatever, and you're like both like bitching about your lives or whatever. And then like you start to get out of that phase, like whatever was the thing starts to clear up and then like things are good. And then you're like, I don't have anything to talk about anymore. And it's like, we have this thing where we don't want to brag or we don't want to talk about how things are good. And I I think it kind of plays into that where a lot of us, maybe as women, I don't know. I haven't fully analyzed this. We're just like live you know, analysis, live (laughs) processing right here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of us, especially as women, like we grew up connecting and bonding over what was wrong, over our problems, over, you know, what wasn't working in our lives. And so the thing about coaching that I think is really distinctive compared to like therapy, for example, is that coaching actually isn't supposed to be problem-based. It's supposed to be goal-based, Right. And so sometimes a goal is getting out of a problem, but sometimes a goal has nothing to do with a problem at all. Right. So I'm going to walk through these, these questions really quickly for us. Something, this is the core of what we teach in IGC. There's four components to a coaching request. If you've been through our courses, you've heard this. This is a great reminder. If you haven't, this should give you a snapshot of what we teach and how we're different. So how to get an evolved coaching request. Number one, how do you want to spend our time today, right? What what is your coaching request? That's the first question. Two, what do you want to walk away with from our session? Like really, where do you want to be when we finish the session? I love that question because it allows the client to be um, self-sufficient and envision where they want to be at the end of the 45 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours, if you're doing an intensive, whatever it is, right? Even at the retreat, we asked at the beginning, where do you want to be? What do you want to walk away with by the end of the retreat? Yeah. So a coaching request could, could cover any, you know, period that you're, you're distinguishing. Number three is what would that look like, right? What does it really look like to have the thing that you want to have? Is it a list? Is it tools? Is it practices? Is it an overall feeling? And then question number four is what is the larger breakthrough within this request? And a lot of people skip this question because they think it feels too ambiguous or they don't fully understand it as coach and they don't want to like try to explain it to their client. But to me, this is like the key question because it's asking, how is this a recurring pattern or a theme? in your life. So should we give like an example of like walking through a coaching? Yeah. And that, that breakthrough question too, if you're doing like, we always talk about like great coaching. And if you're like, shoot, I'm not like, please take what Katie has just offered and incorporate it. But that bigger, uh, that breakthrough question also, um, brings you back to like the coaching plan. Um, and the overall right. reason that, uh, a client hired you. So it's like when you're, you're coaching and you're managing progress and accountability, you're really managing the short-term goal or coaching request, as well as the long-term, you know, overall project. So I think that also right. helps ground you back into the, you know, the vision or the three month plan or whatever it is. Yeah. So we'll go through an example, but just so everyone understands like the structure of the coaching relationship, like the way we teach it in IGC is that you have an overarching coaching plan. We call it your glow plan. Glow stands for greatest level of want. What is it that you want most for yourself, your community, your business, the world, right? So we help our students and our students help their clients establish their glow plan. That might be a six month period based on their contract. That might be a 12 month period. They might be working a five year plan, right? It doesn't matter. And you can be working multiple plans at the same time. We'll talk more about that. But you have your arching, overarching plan. Then let's say you're meeting weekly for your sessions. As Liv just spoke about, every week you're touching in on where you are in relation to the plan. And sometimes things are gonna veer off track, 
but to avoid things from feeling random or scattered or uh, for us or our clients to end a session being like, what just happened? What did we just talk about? Did we get anywhere? We really want to help you follow this plan. It, it makes me think of like, if you're training for a marathon and you're given like a training schedule, right? Like this is your training schedule. This is your goal schedule of how to start to achieve your goals. And right. we work really carefully. I guess we should do another episode on this, but we work really carefully to help our clients, our students develop their glow plan so that they know what they're doing every week, which helps inform what's happening on the sessions each week. I'd really like to get more clarity around you know, what type of job I want to get next. I feel like I know I don't like what I'm doing. This is me 2013, I think. Um, I feel like I don't really like what I'm doing, but I don't know what's next. We have an hour long session today. What do you want to walk away with from our coaching session? I'd really like to walk away with one, like a feeling like that I know what I'm doing. So an increase in confidence. Okay. And then I'd also like to walk away with like two or three action steps to take um, before our next call, like besides okay, just great. thinking. Okay. So feeling, and then one to two action steps. Yeah. I love that. You have such a great level of clarity. So my next question was going to be, what would that look like? It sounds like we know it would be a feeling and one to two action steps. Is there anything else? I don't think so. I think definitely making sure that I plan to take those actions and like Put them in my calendar. So I actually do them. Okay. So ac- then like, uh, accountability around maybe time blocking too. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So Olivia circa 2013, here's the money question. What is the larger breakthrough here? Like, how is this maybe a recurring theme or pattern in your life? Well, I think I always feel like I want to be doing something different, but I like don't know where to start. Everyone tells me I should just like be happy in the career that I have and like I don't have it so bad. So then I feel like discouraged from even exploring what I would want to do. And it's just kind of like this cycle of like inspiration and then lack of action. So I think ultimately Mm. if I can like reprogram that to actually take action on what I want versus what other people tell me to do, I'll actually get mm-hmm. somewhere. Okay, cool. So just to summarize your coaching request for today, it sounds to me like you want to do something different in your life. And you often have this feeling like you want more, you want something different. You will have this feeling you'll get inspired. And then often you'll go talk to other people Um, and they kind of give you this idea that like, you should be happy with how things are. You then don't take action. You get a little bit discouraged. You feel frustrated and it lands you ultimately back where you began, which is feeling like you want to do something different, not doing anything, feeling frustrated. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then the goal for today is to walk away with you feeling differently one to two action steps. And we're also going to block time on your calendar so that you're accountable to yourself and to our coaching work. You got it. Cool. Okay. So, you know, I think that what's helpful to point out too, is like that your job as coach is to listen. Like there were some things that I said where I was using the exact words. I was actually like writing down on my sticky note, what you were saying, because for me, that helps track it. Um, and I, I have to take notes. I have to write down like the exact words that hit me that I hear a client say. Yeah, as you should. <laughs> like yeah, but like some people are better. Like I was even watching you coach this weekend and like I, you just were doing more from memory than I can. Like yeah. it's, we're just, it's just different people. Yeah, you have to, I guess the point is like, you have to know yourself for me, like I have to write things down because it gives me a visual for like the connecting the dots. Yeah. And then it allows me to track it back throughout the second, the session to check in and say, okay, this was their exact coaching request. Are we getting there or are we not getting there? I think that's great. And I also will say from a client lens, like it makes you feel more supported and Mm -hmm. 
it, it's like, especially for, you know, in that, that scenario we just created, it's like, my biggest issue is that I'm unclear, right? So if you're not tracking what I'm saying, and I get like, it could potentially make me feel even more unclear, right? So it's like, right. you're also modeling clarity, right? And I think that this, you know, always comes up. It's like everybody wants to create something, right? But we get mm-hmm. so, you know, stuck in the gray area and in the lack of action and in the lack of clarity mm-hmm. that we don't make any moves. And, and there's still aspects mm-hmm. of my life where I'm like, oh my God, decision fatigue, or like, there's so many options. I don't know what to do. And it's like, you have to know how to break that cycle or you just end up back in the same place. And I think having a coach really articulate with clarity, what I'm saying is like the foundation for me being also, also being able to do that. Right. And like you said, at the very beginning of this, like we often get this, like, I don't know response, right? Like, and the reality is, is like, uh, typically our clients do know they do know deep down inside what they want. They're just unorganized in their thinking process or they're scattered or they don't have support. They don't have accountability. They're yeah. going to other, you know, third parties in their lives, checking all of their ideas and then never doing anything because the people around them are also like, you know, not holding them accountable. So they're just not lifting themselves any higher because they're, they're not, they don't have the right, the right tools or the right support in, in the moment. And so that's why coaching is so transformational because you're holding your client as like, as the one who knows Mm -hmm. as the one who has the answers, but your job is to help pull those answers out of them. You do that through asking them powerful questions and then reflecting back to them what you're hearing. And it sounds so oversimplified. There really is an art to it. It's something you'll continue to get better and better at with practice and with getting proper training and certification, but asking powerful questions and then reflecting back what you're hearing is what helps our clients get out of, I don't know, and into let's make a plan. Right. And that's what we want to be doing and coaching as opposed to other relationships. Like we're not focusing on you know, a problem or something that's wrong, we're focusing on what we want to create. And so just kind of circling it back also to the retreat, it's like, you have these coaching calls, typically weekly for 60 minutes, right? We always recommend that, especially for new coaches, right? It's a better structure to manage, you know, accountability and track progress and keep everything very, um, you know, standardized in a sense. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think people will come to the calls and if you don't really hone in on that request and you're not really bringing the call back to that, you know, at least a couple of times, right. Then the client's going to walk away of unsure, unsure of what happened and unsure what to do outside of the call, right? Like coaching relationships are like the project is not created inside the call. Typically the project is created outside of the call. Right. So the Mm -hmm. call is where we come to discuss what's working and what isn't working, what outline the next step. Right. But we also want to show our clients that the project, like Katie started with the greatest project you're ever going to work on is yourself. But the project is often happening. The doing is happening outside of the call. Yeah. And, you know, you wrote something in our notes. I'm just going to read it because it's like it's so clear, but if we believe coaching is problem-based coaches make less progress towards goals, coaches and clients make less progress towards goals because they're essentially looking slash focusing on problems as to po- as opposed to working on projects. Coaching is future-based. It's about the future that you want to create, right? So as coaches, we want to be coaching to possibility. What's possible? What do you want to create? Like I'm less interested as a coach, I'm less interested in what's not working in your life. And I'm more interested in what do you actually desire? And so that's where as a coach, like it sounds sort of flippant, but like, it's, it's like, it's what's required of the job. Like you have to become uninterested in your clients, complaints, problems, roadblocks. Like they're interesting because there's something to get curious about and dig into, but they're not interesting because we, we don't stop there. We don't skip over them, right? This isn't like, you know, 
we don't, we don't, uh, what's it called when you spiritual, we don't bypass. bypass. Yeah. Yeah. We don't bypass things. We don't act like things aren't things, but we also don't make the roadblocks the goal. The goal is not to just get past, get past the roadblock. The goal is to reach your goal. And along the way we have to navigate roadblocks. Right. And that's where like the coaching is an art thing kind of comes into play as well, because when a client does have a request that's kind of, po- you know, presented in, you know, a negative or a moving away type language rather than moving forward or moving towards, we actually have them reframe that. So if I say like my request, my request for today is that I want to stop getting in my own way. Katie would say, if you're not getting in your own way, what are you doing? Right. And I would say, okay, I'm, you know, getting action items completed. I'm gaining clarity and so forth. Right. And so we always want to be bringing our clients back to that forward momentum and back to what we're working on. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up because sometimes people can have a massive breakthrough around that initial reframe. So let's some, let's say someone says like, um, I want to not be single anymore. And you're like, okay, you like, can we reframe that without a not? And they're like, uh, and you're like, so do you want to be in a relationship? And they're like, well, I'm not (laughs) sure that I want to be in a relationship. Like, wow, you really jumped the gun there, buddy. And it's like, (laughs) you don't want to be single. Right. And so then they're like, this something like this actually happened over the weekend, really similar, you know, or like, um, I don't want to be holding back in my marketing. And it's like, as a coach, like for me, maybe it's just me, but like, I have a hard time envisioning someone not holding back. So I also just will ask, like, if you're not holding back, then what are you doing? And they're like, well, I would be getting on lives without inhibition. I wouldn't be censoring myself. I would be writing and posting. I would be, and then all of a sudden you have this like massive project plan. Exactly. Exactly. And then that's exactly the thing though. It's like, then we're not focused on the problem, but why are you holding back? Of course, sometimes you need to explore that. Like Katie said, it's not bypassing or being insensitive, but the ultimate goal, especially inside of a session, you know, acknowledge the thing that might be blocking and then go back Mm -hmm. to creating. And you don't know what you're going to create if you can't actually name it. Right. Like I right. can't actually declare, yes, I want to be in a relationship. Yes. I want to be out there, you know, on Instagram or whatever. Yes. I want to quit my job and find a new one. Right. Like the gray area right. is only fun for so long. <laughs> and then we like talked about, I was thinking about this when I woke up this morning, but we talked about this, like the blob, that was like a thing that came oh up. God, which yeah. maybe we'll, we'll do a, we'll do a, um, a leaders rising wrap up session on the podcast and talk about that more. I bring this up because the blob is like sort of a funny thing that we came up with as a group, but it's this, it's this idea of like holding a vision before you know exactly what it is. And I bring this up because often we don't know exactly what we want. And I know I just said that that's not true and that you can call your clients out on that and get them to declaring what they do want. But what I mean is like, okay, for example, for me right now, I'm looking for a home And I think my husband and I want to buy a home, but I actually don't know. So I don't know if I'm not making a project plan around buying a home. I'm just making a project plan around finding a new home. We could rent, we could buy. That's part of the blob part, right? I actually don't know if we want to get an apartment or a condo or a townhouse or a single family home. I don't know about that either. So I have to start to say like, well, what things do I want? I know it's really important to me to have like a workspace that feels really good where like I have a nice view out the window and like just little things. So sometimes when I'm envisioning something, I can pull details, but I can't get like the exact imprint of like what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, you know, I've used this process in finding a partner, in, in creating businesses, in working on my book, in envisioning like how I want, want to feel in my body, like all different kinds of goals where, you know, so, so the, the way to handle this, if you're a coach is to ask your client, like, well, what do you know? Can you give me some of the qualities of the thing that you're working to create? Right. And so you get them out of like, it has to be a house in this city that like looks like this to how do you want to feel in the house? Like, how many bedrooms do you need to have? Like, you know, little asking around little things and they may not have answers for all of them, but from there you can start to map out a vision that 
doesn't have a level of attachment where it's not like, I want this house on this listing, but it's like, I want a house that makes me feel this way. I want a house with some of these qualities. And then they can start to get closer to actually creating that thing for themselves. Yeah. So sidebar, every real estate agent should also be a certified coach in our glow circle.com <laughs> apply, but, um, no, you're right. Like it's about, it's about collecting evidence. It's about collecting details and bring us back to the blob though. Cause you didn't really. Well, the blob is just like this term for a vision that's not fully formed. So like I, okay, this is vulnerable, but <laughs> When I was manifesting my current relationship with my now husband, I would imagine this like blob. I know it's sounds so weird. <laughs> Olivia's already heard this, but still her eyes are like awkward. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know what like, word you're going to use this time. <laughs> I would imagine this like blob, like this, like this, like being like in bed with me, like holding me and like, not in like a sexual way, but like, I would just imagine his energy and I would feel into it. And for me, it started to get me present to the feeling that I wanted to have with this person. And at the time I was dating someone else. I was start, I was still seeing someone who I had previously dated. So I had sort of a level of attachment to that person actually. And it's not the person that I am with now who I ended up marrying. Right. And so what I tried not to do was ever imagine that guy that I was dating as, as like my, my future partner, like my life partner, because I wasn't sure. And I, I, you know, no one else had come in yet to fill that space. So for me, just imagining this, like this, like being this like blob, helped me get clear and hold the vision without needing to know what he looked like and how tall he was and where he went to school and, you know, what kind of car he drove and where he lived and all these other qualities. Yeah. It's, it's like, um, a way to kind of capture the essence of what you desire, even if it's only bits and pieces. Right. But it's also where we often have to start because if we had all of the answers right away, I mean, I think I always go back to like the original reason I came to coaching was that I was unfulfilled, you know, personally, but also professionally. And I think that I had, I had spent a lot of time. I know that I had spent a lot of time, like actually tracking what I liked and what I didn't like about my life. And I think I've brought this up here before where it's like, I actually had to audit what was working and what wasn't. And for me, that literally meant reflecting every night on like the parts of my life that I actually did like, even if it was only you know, uh, something like being able to relax after work or, you know, being able to, you know, have a little extra time for this or that. And sometimes it was such small things. Um, and then I would also look at what needs to change like immediately in my life. And what, what it helped me to do was realize at the time I was a public school teacher, right? And so I loved working with the kids. I loved developing curriculum. I loved like, I was serving as kind of like the lead teacher um, of professional development at that time. So I was doing a lot of, you know, training with the other teachers. So I could like pinpoint things that I loved about the work that I was doing. I just didn't like how I was doing it. Right. And so some things that needed to change right away was like, I have to get out of the public school system and like this pull for standardized testing. Like it real, it was like hurting my soul. Right. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, but I had this like growing bank, if you will, of like the things that I loved. Right. And so I was able to bring that into my coaching. I mean, I think it started with like, I'm so sick of the testing. Okay. So what do you want to do? Like instead, right. How can you, you know, empower people or teach people instead of doing it like this. Right. And so just kind of bringing it back to like the whole idea of like coaching being mm -hmm. a project, like, sure, we're human. Like it often starts with complaints. Like it sucks now that you realize it. Like we often like spend the first 15 minutes of any like wine night with the girls bitching about everything that's going wrong. Right. And also that's a little bit of a protective mechanism, right. To avoid well, celebration, which women often do. That. And also it's just like a kind of a function that keeps us stuck. Like 
yeah. you know, I, I think a really great exercise that everyone can do whenever they're, they feel like they're stuck in frustration is to write down all of your complaints. And mm-hmm. I know I just said like complaints aren't that helpful, but, but hang with me for a second. So write down all of your complaints, write down all of your frustrations, and then actually one by one, go through the list and say like, well, what is the desire or the need that's stuck inside of this? So like, you know, if your complaint is, I don't like where I live, then the the desire is I want to live somewhere where I feel blank, where I feel inspired, well, you know, whatever the qualities are, or if you're like not happy in your relationship, like I want a relationship that makes me feel blank. I want a relationship that has these qualities, right? So you can really take any complaint, you know, and, and change it into a desire. And you're already on your step to, on the way to, to self-coaching yourself. Right. And like complaints are really the lowest form of responsibility, right? But they're often where we can start actually taking responsibility, right? We can start right. saying, okay, I've identified the problem. It, it's the, it's when you just sit in the problem and do nothing where it's like, okay, now you're off the hook, right? Like you don't have to do it enough right. to into these communities where everyone's doing it like that. And it's like, this right. is actually easier than like taking, you know, some control of my life and you know, creating the, the thing you wish existed. So you are the greatest project you will ever work on. You get to create different projects in different areas of your life for different time periods. We didn't go into this big, but you know, another really significant thing that sets us apart in our approach is when we have our students and, and teach them to do this with their clients, create project plans. It's always, what do you want to create? And by when do you want to create it? There has to be a timeline in coaching. And so, you know, you want to coach to possibility, not just to problems. You want to get beyond the problems. And when your clients come to you and say, they don't have a coaching request, or when you show up to your coach and you say, I I actually don't have a coaching request. You have to force yourself to dig deeper because that's actually where the real growth and where the significant leaps can happen when you're not troubleshooting a problem, but when you're actually taking moments to grow and advance and strategize and think about your life and your projects from a higher level, rather than just putting out fires in the day to day. So ultimately, like whether you're listening to this episode as a coach or as a client of, you know, someone who's coaching or someone who's thinking about becoming a coach, the real, you know, takeaway that we hope that everyone sees is that true coaching and and getting a great coaching request really comes from the creative process, right? We are going back to the project and the creation every time. And that's really how you see progress in coaching. That's how we know that coaching works. We love you guys so much. We hope these tips and strategies and tools will help create that six-figure coaching practice that you're after. Tune in next week. 